Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. This is The Scent Maven and welcome back to my channel, Shopping in Scents. So today I have a different type of video for you. It is a video that I am recording because um, I could not find a video like this on YouTube when I needed it about a month and a half ago. A video on stress-free apartment hunting and stress-free moving. And different tips and things that you can do to make your move and your apartment finding less stressful, if if there is such a thing. So, is there? Well, if money is not a factor, if you have unlimited finances, if you have good finances, if you have a great credit score, if you are a single person without children, without a pet, and don't smoke, and don't care what neighborhood you live in, then apartment finding is going to be a lot less stressful for you than it is going to be for the rest of us, i.e. me. So I had a budget. I had a neighborhood I wanted to stick with because I needed to be close to my mom. I have a dog. Um, so all these factors played into the difficulty of finding an apartment. So both times that I had to move, I had to move twice in the last six years. Each time it was because the landlord had sold his or her house. And the first time it happened, finding a new apartment, my last apartment, was very difficult. So when it happened again, I was not hopeful um, and I was not looking forward to the whole process. But there are things to look out for. And let me just say to you what I wanted somebody to say to me a month and a half ago. You can do this. You can get through it. You will get through it. You will have a new beginning, a better beginning, and everything is going to be okay. Deep breaths. And I have a sign that says this in my apartment somewhere. It's a bad breathe. It's a bad day, not a bad life. Okay? So having said that, let me tell you what to expect and what I think are some good steps to take. So first, um, go to a bunch of different real estates. Don't just call them on the phone. Go to the neighborhood real estates, the real estates in your neighborhood. Um, go to a bunch of them and fill out a form and give them your documentation. So documents that they're gonna ask you for are going to be paycheck stubs to prove that you can afford the apartment. They're gonna to wanna to see ID. They're gonna to wanna to know your credit score. They might want a statement of employment from your employer saying that you are employed uh, and your W-2 form. And they may ask you for a picture of your pet or to meet your pet if you have one. And some of them will ask for a bank statement. Um, I don't show them my bank statement. I don't find that's a thing that you really, really have to do. I don't like doing that. Uh, just because like how much, why should they know how much money total you have? That way they can jack up your rent later on. I, anyway, so go to a bunch of different real estates, fill out the forms, give them your documents. Reputable real estates, I should say. Now, you can also look online. There are some great websites. Zillow is a very good website. That's Z-I-L-L-O-W. Uh, there's also Trulia, which is, yeah. And then there's Rent Hop. And you could always go on Craigslist. I tend to not like that option. So I had talked to people who said, you know, don't go through a broker. Don't go through a real estate because you'll have to pay a real estate fee. That is true. But if you get the apartment from an independent person, there is no guarantee that you're not going to get scammed. Whereas if you go through a reputable real estate, yes, you do have to pay a fee, but you have the peace of mind of knowing that you have some guarantee that this is um, a legal apartment that is for rent. You know, because you hear about a lot of like, you know, what is to prevent someone from like, let's say this apartment. What is to prevent me from putting this on Craigslist and saying, hey, I have an apartment for rent? You know, and, and you know, and I don't mean like regular like subletting. I mean, like people, I 
read like they they find empty apartments in buildings that they don't own and they put them on craigslist or they put them on whatever website or they advertise them however and this is not to bad mouth craigslist at all but they they put them on wherever and it, it turns out that they're not truly the owner or whatever so anyway i would say go through a real estate and you're gonna have to go to a bunch of them because the odds are if if you just go to one you're not going to have that much success and also it depends on how much time you have um some of us don't have the luxury of having an unlimited amount of time to find a new apartment so the more real estate you register with the better are the better the chances are that you're going to find something faster not always and check on Zillow and other websites because real estates do list their apartments on Zillow. Um, then also I would recommend that you keep track, keep a log of all the apartments that you see. So I kept an Excel spreadsheet of all the apartments I saw, the date that I went, the time, the location, the real estate, the price, and why I did not take the apartment, what was wrong with it. And I did that for two reasons. First, if you don't move out of your current apartment on time and you become subject to an eviction proceeding, that is good evidence to show a judge that you have been looking for, actively looking for an apartment. You have proof, you have a login sheet. Also, a lot of landlords will list their apartment with more than one real estate. So it's important to keep track of what you've seen already so you don't see it multiple times. I made that mistake. I was listing the apartments, not looking at my list before I went to see other apartments and had three different real estates take me to the same apartment and ended up driving there before I realized, hey, I've seen this apartment already. I was like, what does this neighborhood look familiar, you know? So there's that. Now, <clears throat> I wanna talk about why you have to move, why, you would move. There's two different reasons. One is you want to move. Some people, you got a great new job, you changing locations, you decided you need a bigger space, you want to change your scenery. Great. You you know, you're you're looking for a new apartment. Others of us aren't so lucky. Um others of us are being forced to move either because the house is being sold or for whatever other reason. And so it becomes more stressful. So the process could happen like this. And this, this, okay. I don't wanna make this a negative video, but supposing your landlord decides to sell his or her house and they tell you, I'm, I'm selling my house, I would like you to move out. Sometimes you might get lucky and the new buyer may want to keep you as a tenant because they're buying the house as an investment. That hasn't happened in, in either of the cases for me, but that's not to say it couldn't happen. So your landlord tells you verbally, listen, I'm selling the house. You have to leave. Okay. So you start looking and let's say you don't have any luck. You can't find a place you can afford. You can't find a place that'll take pets and the time goes by. They can, or they must rather, if they want you out, at least in New York, as far as my knowledge is, as far as my knowledge is uh, concerned, they have to serve you, serve you with a document that says you have to leave. So they will give you, they will have you served with a notice that says you have 30 days to vacate or we are going to take you to housing court and start eviction proceedings. Now, there are people who will tell you, don't worry, you know, it's a formality. If you can't find a place, let them take you to court. The judge will give you time, drag it out. You know, what is it to you, right? Don't follow that advice. Okay, first of all, who wants to go to court and do that whole thing? I don't know about you, but I'm not the type of person who is like, you want me to leave? Make me, you know, I'm, I'm not that type of person, okay? So 
if you can avoid getting to that point where you have to go to housing court, I would say avoid it because um, in some cases it can go on your um, credit score. It can lower your credit score depending. And then there's the whole hassle of having to go back and forth to housing court. They may extend your time a month. They may extend it two months. I think the maximum in New York is six months. And I didn't want to have to be doing all that. It's a very scary thing. And it's meant to be, it's meant to be scary. Okay. It's meant to be scary. The, the landlords want you out and they're going to, they're going to try to not intimidate you, but you know, who wants, who wants that hassle, you know? So where was I? So you're looking for an apartment, go to a bunch of different real estates. If you're in the predicament, <clears throat> and this has happened twice to me, keep in mind, if you're in the predicament where your landlord has sold a house, do not count on the real estate agent who has sold the house to find you a new apartment. This has happened to me twice, so I know. The first time, the guy that sold the house, the real estate agent, my landlord told me would help me find a new place to live. The guy did nothing of the sort. And he told me, cause I was at a certain, you know, I had paid a certain rent. My landlord was good. He did not raise my rent. And this is a thing that you will notice. If you've been in a place for a while and your landlord has been good because you've been a good tenant and they haven't raised your rent. And now you have to find a new apartment. You will discover that the apartments have gotten smaller, but the rents have gotten higher. So this first real estate guy just ended up telling me, Hey, there's nothing I can do for you. You got to pay the market rate. Okay. Second place, last place I was at, landlord said to me, the real estate agent, oh, she's going to find you a new apartment. Found me nothing. Showed me apartments that were small, dirty. One landlord wanted the rent in entirely in cash and with no lease, which is ridiculous um and so she was supposed to find me an apartment at no fee since she wasn't getting a fee i guess she wasn't really motivated to really find me a place so don't count on the person that sold the house is going to find you a new apartment even she told me she was like you know what go to other real estate agents because i can't find you anything i haven't rented an apartment in months because people are just, you know, the rents, the rents are too damn high, you know? So anyway, I'm going to take a little sip. This is iced tea, regular iced tea, um, diet iced tea, non-alcoholic. So what else to look for? So you've registered with a bunch of different apartment, a bunch of different real estates, and you've looked online. Chances are you're gonna to have to look at multiple apartments. I looked at about 15 apartments in about a month and a half before I found one that was acceptable. Not fabulous, but acceptable. Something that I could kind of afford um, that would take a dog, that would fit my furniture, um, and that was kind of in the roundabouts neighborhood that I wanted to be. So yeah looking for an apartment became like a second job. I was talking to real estate agents all the time, texting them. They were calling me. I was calling them. I was looking online. I was seeing sometimes two and three apartments a day. It was, it was a process. So let me tell you some things to look out for. Okay. know your landlord when you're looking at an apartment or for an apartment know the landlord so you want to meet the landlord you want to figure out what kind of person they are um you don't want to end up in a situation where you're going to be living in a place for a year and then have to move so i would ask the landlord and i have asked landlords of the apartments where i've looked do you plan on selling your house at any point in the future. The other 
question that you want to consider is the age of your landlord. Now, not to say anything against elderly people. Seniors are great. My mom's a senior, love seniors. But if your landlord is a senior and God forbid they pass away, you're going to be in a predicament probably where their children or child or relatives are going to sell the house. Also, if your landlord is elderly, you may want to consider who is going to make repairs in your apartment should anything break, who's going to take out the garbage um, for the house or building, and uh, who's going to sweep and shovel the snow. Then you also have to think about where you want to live. Do you want to live in an apartment building? Do you want to live in a uh, an apartment in a, in a multifamily house? Um, do you want to live above a store? Because I have looked at all three. Now, I prefer to live in a multifamily house, which is what I've done. This will be the third time. Um, apartment buildings I looked at, I did not like the process for the apartment buildings. One apartment building wanted a $100 non-refundable fee for an application to be considered for an apartment. Uh, the other building that I looked at, they wanted a month's rent and a month's security in a bank check for them to even consider you as an applicant. And then if you passed, then you could take the apartment or if you got rejected, they would give you the money back in two to three business days. So the real estate agent said, now supposing you find a fabulous apartment in those two to three days while you're waiting to get your money back from that apartment building management company, what do you do then? You know, for some people that's, that's the money that they have. They don't have tons of extra money. So apartment buildings were out for me. Living above a store. I looked at two apartments above stores. One was above a crepe store, crepe, you know, like crepes, food. I don't know, what, what's another word for a crepe? Anyway, so it was a, above a restaurant. That's something, above a store is, is just something that I would be wary of. Okay, so if you're gonna be above a restaurant or someplace that sells food, how do you know you're not gonna get bugs? What if, God forbid, there's a fire? Um, you know, there, there's a lot of things to consider. The first place that I looked at above the crepe store, um, it was small, it was dirty, and there were, to me, fire hazards. The fire escape, and I could not believe that somebody had done this, the fire escape had pigeon spikes on it. Now you know how people will put pigeon spikes up to keep pe to keep pigeons from pooping on their window sills, uh, not apartment, their roofs, roofs, their rooftops, their windows. They put up pigeon spikes. This particular person put pigeon spikes on the fire escape, not only at the top of the fire escape, but on every step on the fire escape. And then they had, this apartment was in the back of the building. The apartment in the front of the building with the fire escape with the pigeon spikes had three windows. Three windows of the same size. And the person, the occupant, uh, occupant, occupant chose to put a air conditioner in the one window you could get out of to get to the fire escape which you couldn't go down because it had pigeon spikes on it. Okay. The other apartment I looked at above a store was above a chicken, chicken and gyro or gyro restaurant. It was extremely small. It had one closet, um, like a broom closet. Um, the kitchen was so tiny that if you put even a two seat table, and chairs, two chairs and a, and a small table like I have, you couldn't open the stove. It was that small. It was ridiculously tiny. Uh, and the place didn't smell like chicken or food or anything, but 
like I said, if you're looking at an apartment above a store, you want to take into consideration what kind of store it is. If it's an insurance company, if it's, I don't know, a 99 cent store, if it's a place that sells non-food products, you know, maybe you would consider that, but it's living above a place that sells food to me, I just, it, it wasn't, and, and the apartments were terrible. Like I said, they were dirty and they were, well, one of them, the, the one about the crepe place was just dirty and small. The other one was just small. Um, and for the amount of money they wanted, it was ridiculous. It was crazy, crazy ridiculous. And the thing that was even scarier is that the, the real estate agent, and I don't know how true this is, told me that the place above the chicken restaurant, the one with the one closet, that two people had lived there, like a couple. I, I, I couldn't even see one person barely fitting into that place. So that's another thing you want to keep in mind is fire hazards. The one, the restaurant, the apartment above the chicken restaurant had a gas stove next to a radiator. To me, that just doesn't seem safe. And then the other thing that you want to take into consideration <clears throat> when you're looking at apartments is um, air conditioners. Now, if you have air conditioners and you're putting an air conditioner in the window, do you have any windows left to get out of if there's a fire? Because I looked at an apartment a couple of years back where the whole apartment had one window. And if you put your air conditioner in there, how are you getting out during a fire? The other thing that you wanna keep in mind is if you live on the second floor or higher, there's a rule, at least in New York, a law, I forget if it's the second or the third floor where it starts, um, that you have to put a bracket underneath your air conditioner, If I believe if you're on the second floor or higher. So you want to consider that as an extra expense because if you're living in a first floor apartment and you don't have brackets uh, to hold up your air conditioner because it's not required and you're moving into an apartment that's on the second or third floor, um, then you'll be required to have the bracket or you'll get fined depending on where you live. The other thing is uh, the windows. So I had looked at a an apartment where the windows it was an attic apartment and the windows had rollers. So instead of being a window that you lift up, it was a window where you have to crank a lever. So you could not put air conditioners in any one of those windows. The apartment had a sleeve in the wall and I had two air conditioners. Neither one of them was the size of that sleeve. I would have had to either junk or sell the two air conditioners that I had to buy a ginormous air conditioner, specifically the size of that sleeve. And the other thing is I didn't like the fact that the, the windows were these crank uh, windows because it, it, like, what if they get stuck? What if they jam? You don't know. So that was another, another thing for me. I got my, my list of notes here. Oh, here's another thing. When you go to look at apartments, appliances. Most apartments will already have a refrigerator. Some apartments don't. Some apartments don't even have a stove. Um, so if you're going someplace and the tenant is still there and the fridge is still there, ask the landlord if the fridge comes with the apartment or else you're gonna have to buy a fridge and that's an added expense. I had one person, one landlord tell me that they prefer their tenants to buy their own appliances, their stove and refrigerator because the tenant then takes better care of the appliances if they have to buy them themselves. Whereas if the landlord puts them in, then the tenant tends to wreck them. I don't know. The, the apartment itself was dirty and small and didn't look like it was well kept at all. Um, and the, the landlord had a problem with pets, which was strange to me because if you have an apartment that's filthy, why would you care if the person has a pet? Um, don't think that just because you go through a real estate that every apartment that you look at is gonna be clean and in good condition. Um, they will show you apartments that are dirty. And I think that's unprofessional, but whatever. 
So there's that. And then what was the other thing? Air con oh, so a lot of tenants have flat screen, flat screen TVs that they hang on the wall. And then when they move out, there are gigantic holes in the wall that the tenant who moved out should have patched up or at least the landlord should have patched up but they don't so you'll probably see apartments with giant holes in the wall from where flat screens were were held up and um i would ask who intends on fixing those so what else oh your furniture so bring a tape measure with you for some reason, and I don't know if I'm the only person who's like this, I have a, a misconception or a bad judge of I don't, measurement when it comes to furniture. I always imagine my furniture larger than it is or the doorway bigger than it is. So if you have an apartment that you're considering, measure your furniture and measure the apartment to make sure the furniture will fit. Also measure the doorway and if it has a screen door, keep in mind that you may have to remove the screen door in order to get the furniture in and then put it back. You may, if you have a banister, you may have to remove the banister, which is something I had to do, remove the banister and put it back after the furniture comes in. Or in some cases, you may have to put your furniture or get it in through a window in this apartment my sofa would not fit through the front door the movers put it in through the window so i was lucky that i was on the first floor and they'll they'll do that um if you're moving into a place where you have to get your furniture out of if you live on the third floor let's say which is what i had before and you have a piece of furniture that has to get out through a, a, a window like my box spring for example could not get through the doorway it had to come up the fire escape and through the window and that's the way it had to go out. So the moving company will charge you for hoisting. Um, in this case, they were they were kind um, for the sofa because I had no idea it had to come through the window and, and they just pushed it in. So it wasn't technically hoisting, um, but they, they will charge you for that. Um, what else? Also keep keep some money aside for the movers because if you're a single person by yourself and you're going to rely on the movers to put the air conditioners in for you, which they're not really supposed to do and not obligated to do, but if you tip them well, they will do that usually, you know. Um, so keep some money aside for a tip. Parking, where are you gonna park? You may find a great place to live, but if parking is a nightmare, it may not be as great as you think. So, what else? When you find out you have to move, start packing. Even before you find an apartment, start packing. Pack one box a day because it's gonna take some time. It took me a month, about a month to pack my apartment. And I had about, when all was said and done, I had about 46 boxes of all different sizes. You can get boxes at the Home Depot. They come in small, medium, large, and extra large, and they also come in regular and heavy duty. If you are packing fragile stuff like candles or things that are heavy, I recommend getting the heavy duty boxes. Also, I recommend strapping tape. That's what it's called not regular packing tape, but strapping tape. It's more expensive, but it has like fibers in it that make it super strong. And the moving company, when you sign the contract or when you agree to the contract, it will probably say that they are not responsible for items that become damaged if you overpack, mispack, or inappropriately pack boxes. So if you put stuff in a box and it's too heavy and it falls out the bottom, if you do not tape it properly, if for any reason the cause of the item falling, breaking, getting damaged is a result of the way you packed it, it's not their problem. So 
make sure that you pack well. I learned that from the first time that I packed. I put an entire bookcase of books in one box and almost like gave the guy a hernia. So I chose this time to do more boxes and instead of large and extra large, I stuck more to medium boxes so that they were more manageable. The other thing I would say in addition to packing one box a day is alternate between supply runs and packing. So packing is exhausting. It's just physically tiring and mentally tiring because you're basically seeing your entire apartment being, you know, your entire life being put into a box. It's kind of sad in a way, you know, you're used to the place you live, you like it and stuff, or I mean, it could be different for you. You could hate the place you live and want to move. But for most of us, it's kind of a sad time, you know, leaving everything behind, not leaving everything behind, but leaving a, an old home to move into a new home, even though it's a good time too. So what I would do and what I did is one day I would go to Home Depot and I would get a bunch of boxes and then and tape and supplies, packing paper and stuff. And that will run you some money. The boxes, the regular thickness, is about a dollar fifty or so a box. Um, the ones that are heavy duty are two dollars and change a box. So keep that in mind. So one day I would go and buy supplies. In, in the next couple of days I would pack. Then I would go get supplies. And on the day that I would buy the supplies, I would not pack because going on a supply run is um, an experience in itself. Especially if you have to carry boxes up two flights of stairs. Not that the boxes are heavy, but they're awkward shaped. They're hard to hold. They're cumbersome. They, you will be wrestling, your new exercise will be wrestling boxes. They'll fall, you'll, you know, they'll, you'll trip over them going up your stairs, trip on them coming down your stairs, you know, not, no, yeah, not coming down your stairs, but bringing them up, you're, you're going to trip over boxes. The other thing that's the fun thing about moving is you're going to break things. You're going to break things because you're going to get tired and you're just going to drop things. You're going to move things around and forget where you move them and step on things and break them. I've already broken multiple pictures by stepping on them, dropping them. I went to take one off a wall and ended up smacking myself in the face with it and hitting my lip. I broke one of my favorite owl, glass owls. Uh, I broke a pineapple luminary from Bath and Body Works. I broke at least three pictures and I continue to break things. Like I said, out of being exhausted and just getting more clumsy, out of constantly rearranging and moving things and then forgetting where I move them and step on them and just grabbing things in a hurry and dropping them or smacking myself in the face with them. So that's another fun thing that you can look forward to when you move is breaking a lot of stuff. And having to get rid of a lot of stuff. It gives you a, an excuse to do some spring cleaning, no matter what season it is. So there's that. Um, is there anything else that I want to tell you about moving? Ask your landlord how they want to be paid as far as the rent. If you have an absentee landlord, find out, it, find out in advance where they want the check mailed. I would highly recommend that if you get an apartment that you get a lease because if you don't have a lease, you're a month to month tenant, you could be evicted at any time for any reason. I mean, you could fight it. You could go to court and fight it if you think it's an unreasonable reason. But I would recommend, like I said, go through a reputable real estate, sign a lease. The lease is usually one year. If you're lucky enough to get two years, do the two years. Uh, because then you're guaranteed a place to live at least for that amount of time at that rate of rent and get a landlord that takes checks because paying in cash is just, I don't know. For me, I just don't think it's a great option. Um, even if they give you a receipt, I, I prefer to pay by check. So I think that's everything. I went through all of the stuff uh, on my list. Yeah. 
So I hope this was helpful to you. If you're in the process of moving, I'm with you. I understand it's going to be hard, but you will get through it. And I'm currently in the process of unpacking and I have aches and pains everywhere. And sometimes I wake up in the morning and I feel like I've been hit by a truck because it's just, it's exhausting. But you will get through it and you will love your new home and everything will be okay. Trust me. So that's the end of this very long video. I hope it was helpful to you. Share your moving triumph slash horror stories below. Remember to comment, like, subscribe, hit the gray bell for more videos. And until next time, goodbye everyone out there in YouTube land.